So this is case number five, and when you look at this on very low power, there are actually two fragments. I'm going to start with this fragment here, and I'm going to start with this fragment because I want to go over some basics. The first thing I want to say is that is talk a little bit about the normal colonic mucosa. If you look at the colonic mucosa here, it's almost normal. This is a touch cauterized, of course, but normal colonic mucosa will show crypt all running in parallel reaching all the way to the muscularis mucosa. This is the submucosa. As you might have guessed, this is an, this is a sample. Oh, you may or may not have guessed. This is a, a endoscopic submucosal dissection sample. So essentially, the endoscopist is going in and dissecting along the subcutaneous tissue and gets these long, large pieces of tissue that we put on a board, pin it out, and then map it out and then submit it entirely. So let's go and see, look at the lesion itself. You'll see that the crypts here, by the way, look a little uh, disheveled, and that's because of the mass, like the effect that the this, the adenoma, is having on the adjacent colonic mucosa. So this is an adenoma, and if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know precisely what I'm talking about. The cells here in the adenoma are tall, dark, and hyperchromatic and stratified. Right, so three things: they're stratified, the multiple layers; they're tall, they're dark, and hyperchromatic; and three, they're pencil-shaped. But relative to what? It's relative to the adjacent crypts here. So if you compare these crypts right here, these are tall, dark, and hyperchromatic, and you can see that the nuclei here are so much smaller. As an aside, you'll occasionally see neutrophils. In the adjacent crypts, this is a normal appearing crypt, um, this active cryptitis has little or no meaning. This is an effect that the adenoma is having on the adjacent colonic mucosa. The mucosa can look pretty inflamed as well. Again, this is not colitis. This is an effect that the adenoma is having on the rest of the mucosa. Um, a couple of other things. Oh, let's get this out of the way. These are foam cells and again a reaction to the adenoma right here. Um, when you look at the adenomas frequently, you'll see a fair amount of apoptotic activity. You're seeing it right here. It's a helpful clue when you're dealing with a very subtle adenoma. So in addition to those three features I spoke of, the third thing I need, fourth thing I need to know, I need to show or prove to myself is that it's on the surface. So those tall, dark, hyperchromatic and stratified cells are on the surface. And that is because reactive conditions can look very atypical. In fact, I can show you pictures of a reactive regenerative process and an adenoma side by side, and you would not be able to tell the difference. This is why I require it on the top. The reason I require it again on the top is because in those reactive conditions, that atypia is at the base of the mucosa, not at the top. So I demand it being on the top. When you get older and wiser, you can do it without having the top involved. But as of now, if you're a trainee, you need to have your surface. And finally, finally, it's this abrupt transition that I think is very, very helpful, right? Take a look at this. I can draw, I can draw a line here and Dramatically, this tall, dark, hypochromatic epithelium transforms into this very normal-looking epithelium. So, that abruptness is very much like an adenoma. All right, so a couple of more things about the adenoma. So, a couple of more things about the adenoma. Take a look at this field, right? This looks like tall, dark, and hypochromatic. Look at this gland and then compare it with that gland. Right here... These cells are polarized. What do I mean? That the nuclei, which are drawn pencil shaped, are perpendicular to the basement membrane, right? Here they're getting more round up. They're losing that relationship with the basement membrane. They're getting more cuboidalized. They're acquiring prominent nucleoli. And most importantly, look at the way these cells right here are distributed very chaotically. This, ladies and gentlemen, is high-grade dysplasia. Now, high-grade dysplasia can be cytological, but could also be architectural. So if you go back here, 
Notice, as opposed to areas out here where there's a lot more stroma, there's virtually no stroma between the glands. That extinction of that stroma, that complexity of the gland, that's the architectural part. So that is high-grade dysplasia. In this particular area, again, you can see this stratification, but more importantly, the loss of polarity, the prominent nucleoli, the cuboidalization of the cells, all features of high-grade dysplasia. So here we have an adenoma with high-grade dysplasia, but no invasive adenocarcinoma yet. All right, so here's the other fragment, and there's clearly adenoma here as well, tall, dark, and hypochromatic cells. Um, and it looks, and this is, by the way, referred to as a chat artifact because techs find it very hard to cut these adenomas because they tend to be harder. The areas that here that look like I would call high-grade dysplasia, there's almost crib reforming here. But of course, what is most interesting is the fact that there's probably invasive adenocarcinoma here. I'm going to spin this around a little bit. Um, oh, I can't do that. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is the invasive adenocarcinoma bit. Now, why is this invasive adenocarcinoma? You could argue that the muscularis, the muscularis mucosa is right here. Do you see it? So you could argue that that epithelium is in the submucosa. Yes, uh, submucosa is helpful, but remember a lot of non-invasive, a non lot of non-invasive and non-cancerous lesions can have the epithelium occupy the submucosa. So the mere presence of glands in the submucosa, as you will see in the next case, is not invasive adenocarcinoma. So you've got to prove that that submucosal process is indeed carcinoma. So here are those criteria. Number one, desmoplasia. And when you talk about desmoplasia, what you got to see is areas that look like this. This to me is even more classical. It's occupied by fibroblasts. And this refers to desmoplasia anywhere, particularly in the pancreas. Desmoplasia always accompanies gastrointestinal invasive tumors. So it's one of those key features. So what is it, right? And people rarely talk about this. It is the presence of these fibroblasts or myofibroblasts, this myxoid stroma, and these inflammatory cells. It's always inflamed. That, drill it into your brain, that is very typical of desmoplasia. The second feature, the angulation of the nuclei. Take a look at this, right? It's creating these sharp points. Take a look at non-neoplastic stuff, right? It tends to be very smooth. The glands tend to be fairly round. Third feature is incomplete glands. We are not seeing that. Fourth feature is epithelial cells. Now, I can't be certain, but it is likely that that cell and that cell are neoplastic cells, and therefore, in the submucosa, single neoplastic cells, and that is very, very concerning for an invasive process. Occasionally, you can have those single dispersed cells coming off a reactive process with a lot of inflammation, but generally not. A keratin stain can help highlight that. A um, couple of other things, incomplete glands, and here's an incomplete gland. This is what I mean by an incomplete gland. Benign glands are always totally intact, right? 360 degrees, you have cells around it, while well, an incomplete gland is where the nuclei are there partly, and then there's a break. There are no epithelial cells here. This is another feature of invasive adenocarcinoma. So this is invasive adenocarcinoma. A couple of other things to remember. One is how do I know this is submucosa? The most helpful feature to define submucosa is the presence of these muscular arteries. Muscular arteries are not found in the mucosa. Why is this important? Because the muscularis mucosae, as you see here, gets duplicated. One. Two. Um, the tumor, even an adenoma, can destroy the muscularis mucosa entirely, so then you don't know whether you're in the mucosa or if you're in the submucosa. And so if you identify muscular arteries, you can be absolutely certain that you're in the submucosa. And look at these small glands right next to this big-sized arterial channel. That means that we're in the submucosa and these small glands 
These irregular glands, these incomplete glands are in the submucosa and are accompanied by desmoplasia, and therefore this makes it invasive adenocarcinoma.